I'm Peter Block here in New Orleans at the AHA annual meeting. With me is David Kay from Melbourne, Australia, and we have another trial that is probably going to change the way we think about heart failure. No question that it's going to change the way we think about heart failure. Um, so this is the Reduce LAP trial. David, I'm going to let you describe the device and the trial and then the outcome. So tell me what the trial is about and what the device is. So Peter, the reduced LAP trial addresses a novel concept to reduce left atrial pressure, which we believe is a fundamental problem in HEFPEF, and it's a device-based approach to allow shunting from the left atrium to the right atrium. Okay, so this is heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, emphasis on preserved, Absolutely. normal LV size, uh, but a stiff ventricle. So what's the mechanism? What's going on here? So the key physiolo physiological problem in these patients is a high left atrial pressure which is a consequence of a stiff left ventricle and uh, we and others have shown that it's the key driver of symptoms and here we have a mechanical way of reducing the pressure. Okay, so the mechanical way is to produce an ASD. You've got a device that obviously doesn't produce a huge ASD, a little one. How much volume actually goes from left to right, David, and what do you see in terms of reduction in LV size versus increase in RV size? So we have a shunt of around 1.3 to 1. We've shown now that it's stable over a year. There's a small reduction in LV volumes, as you'd expect, with a concomitant small increase, stable over a year in right ventricular volume. And that small reduction in LV volume in a stiff ventricle is enough to make patients better? So what we've shown is that really during activity, that's where the action happens. The LA pressure and LV ADP rise substantially during activity, and we drop that by a modest amount, and that's enough to improve symptoms. Uh, so that's rather extraordinary. So long term, is this left to right shunning going to be a problem for pulmonary hypertension and RV size? So we've shown now that pulmonary pressures are stable, right ventricular volumes are stable out to a year. That gives us a lot of comfort. Okay, so uh, for all you folks out there, and including me, this has been one of the really tough areas of cardiology. How do you deal with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction? Nothing seems to work very well. And now we have left to right shunning, which seems to be perhaps the way to go. Uh, we'll have to see how it works over a longer term, but this is exciting stuff. Absolutely. These, these patients are extremely challenging to treat, and now we have something to offer them. Okay, so one last question, David, and that is, uh, you've done it now for preserved ejection fraction. What about the other half? It turns out the preserved ejection fraction is much more common than we think, probably almost half the patients. And now what about non-preserved ejection fraction? I think that's an exciting opportunity. So we do have good treatments there. HEFPEF patients have no options, so that's the place to start, but HEFREF is a possibility. So this is a blooming area of heart failure. I'm delighted we finally have something to treat these non-compliant patients. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure.